I was so excited to do the the uh, X870 Aros Pro review to the point that I did not order one but two motherboards. So we have the full spectrum of aesthetics from the dark to the to the white ice models. I even purchased some carbon plating just to make it more fancy. But the truth of the matter is that I'm going to piss off a lot of good people at Gigabyte. But here we go. Starting with the obvious. The X870 eHours Pro comes with six PCB layers in an ATX format and, and they both receive two ounces worth of copper plate, which is great for board power handling and it's adequate and it's good. But it's also kind of obsolete in the sense that everybody else is using eight PCB layers. MSI, Asus, everyone, and even Gigabyte B850 series feature 8 PCB layers. Remember the excellent Gigabyte B850 AI Top I reviewed two short months ago, and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. Yeah, it comes with 8 beautiful server-graded PCB layers, and it will affect every single aspect of your motherboard. Lifespan, signal insulence, um, signal insulation, sorry, um, audio, uh, cooling, <laughs> everything so yeah i'm very very disappointed something which was predictably a bad idea and that somebody in gigabyte decided to do in the name of cost saving and uh in the view of what it is today and the competition it does not deserve more than four out of ten now on greener grasses design wise at least the x870e pro is good looking and shows off different techniques of aluminium sending with some cross component tracing and if the mineral dark theme is not for you well the x870e Aros is also available in ice white i absolutely love the fact that even the plugs have been painted in white a care for details which i upload where I am less content will be the presence of some cheap and useless plastic plating, which used to work for us in 2015, uh, but have no place here and now. And I will continue not being happy with the RGB choices made by Gigabyte this year. We have a very dim, almost completely hidden embedded RGB uh, right there, yeah, uh, under the chipset plate. And well, again, this is an add-on which adds complexity to an already very complex motherboard and most importantly cost a pricing that we don't want to be paying for. We also have an Aros backlitted logo on the VRM roof which almost looks good but I also find a bit dated. Uh, luckily we do have four RGB connectors giving us the opportunity to correct all this nonsense. Now most technically it is powered by what placed AMD in such a dominant position at this motherboard season, uh, namely the M5 CPU socket and the X870 E chipset combo. The CPU socket will support anything from the Ryzen 7000 to its 9000 series and will source the famous and fast 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes which will cater to our fastest components, namely our GPU, NVMEs and USB 4s. Now, VRM-wise, we have 2080 amps per stages organized in an 8 parallel phases, plus 2, plus 2, for a grand total of 1560 amps worth of juice. That's 1280 amps worth of, uh, what, CPU-centric juice. And it's enough, obviously, to run any kind of Ryzen 9000 processor on paper. I'm saying on paper because those are parallel phases. Parallel or twin phases are great in terms of stability. They are, but not as docile and precise as direct phases. They have a longer uh, uh, latency as well because they have to go through doublers before going to the power stages. Because of that uh, higher latency, you might feel some lag here and there. On the other hand, it's cheaper to make. It's a Volvo 
uh, not a beamer is what I'm trying to say here. Now, where I was kind of surprised is on the cooling block because my God, are these things well done. We got a massive and well-designed two segment VRM with a nice eight millimeter wide copper pipe for an homogeneous heat spread among them both. They do feature a thermal padded double contact design for direct heat relief from both our chokes and power stages. And I have seen more VRM blocks than most. And those ones are absolutely fantastic. The main VRM block features on both of its sides, incredibly long and thick winglets. And the VRM main wall is absolutely heavy duty, thick, imposing, and can store more heat than its long extended design roof can radiate away. And as the VRM side block goes, it pales in nothing with a dense aluminum block relieved by equally impressive wings. And obviously the mix of a Volvo VRM and this amazing cooling block results in some of the coolest temperatures you can ever hope from a synthetic stress test. After an hour worth of torture CPU crunching, we barely touched the 55 degrees Celsius on both blocks. But what really points out a truly fantastic cooling solution here is, well, one, how precisely well the heat is spread among both blocks and the fact that the heat is radiated so much faster than it is produced with a very stable temperature increase all along our 60 minute stress test. Great news uh, uh, for the motherboard lifespan. So I have no problem seeing it being paired with a Ryzen 7, even a 9, uh, but don't expect great if any overclocking purses here. And, and yeah, again, keep in mind that there might be some lag on, on uh, CPU centric tasks such as video, video editing and stuff like that. RAM wise, the X870 E Aros Pro does hold its ground supporting 256 GB of DDR5 RAM in a dual channel configuration with a maximum data swap of 8,200 million transfers per second, which is where its competition is, more or less. And despite being a single stick maximum speeds advertised here, I managed to get both of my sticks running at 8,200 million transfer per second. But obviously to do so, you'll need to get the right kind of RAM sticks, uh, which needs to feature the Hynix M or Samsung BDI RAM architecture. Now they do not come cheap, but on my past few reviews, I have been using the rather affordable and blazing fast Viper Extreme 5 from Patriot, both in the 8,200 and 9,600 million transfer per second variants, and they are absolutely flawless, reliable, and can easily extract every bit of memory performance this board has to offer. Now, storage-wise, the X870e Pro continues to fare well. We have four NVMEs, three of which are being fed by four PCIe 5.0 lanes each, on paper, I want to say. They all can swap data up to a top of the industry, 128 gigabit per second. Now, the fourth and last NVMe is chipset fed and receives four lanes at PCIe 4.0 standard for plenty fast 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap. I I'm rather happy here. We have a very well managed space and quality cooling components. The closest NVMe to the CPU being the only NVMe with a dedicated non bifurcated access to PCIe 5 graded bandwidth has logically received the bulk of the cooling attention with a double thermal pad treatment and a magnificent dense aluminum block, which despite my best effort and the fastest, most reliable PCIe 5.0 sticks available on the market, temps never really went beyond 40 degrees Celsius. The other three sticks share a rather thick and large thermal padded heat plate, which does a, a very impressive job at keeping all the sticks running without thermal throttling. Uh, one other kudos for Gigabyte here, and their very good and sturdy screwless mechanism on both of the M.2 solid state drive cooling elements, something that maybe Asus could take a look at and yeah, maybe learn from. Export wise, well, the X870e Aros Pro is right where we expected it to be. We have three 16 slots with our main CPU fed export featuring 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes for future proof GPU operation, hence the impressive metallic reinforcements. We also have a very sturdy GPU eject mechanism, which is one of the best on the market today. The two other exports are chipset fed and are more or less fast and can still find some function for PCIe based storage add-on. Overall, good and premium and, and you know, well placed for its price point. Um, but 
obviously, for the few who can count, we have all those components needing 28 PCI 5.0 lanes, and we only have 20 offered by our CPU. So yeah, we're missing eight. Yeah, eight. Well, you've guessed it. Uh, we are in our adult only segment of this review. We're gonna talk about PCIe bifurcation. PCIe bifurcation. If you use any of these two PCIe 5.0 connectors, you will cut in half our GPU export. I mean, not, not, not the export itself, the, the PCIe 5 lanes. We're going from 16 to eight, which is not the end of our Linguinis, since it is still plenty of bandwidth for at least an RTX 1590. And yeah, nothing to re-say here. Uh, an universal Ryzen 9000 limitation, not so much a gigabyte one. Now, more interestingly, back IO-wise, our USB section is limited but powerful with a couple of USB 4, which can swap data up to the whooping 40 gigabit per second, uh, which brings our grand total of USB bandwidth to a respectable 120 gigabit per second. But to that, we need to add that 30 gigabit per second coming from the front panel connectors and our board can output a spacious 150 gigabit per second worth of USB based data. Not bad at all. And display wise, our X870E uh, Arrows Pro is an original. We got our three way out on our back IO, but uh, we also have a front HDMI for secondary monitoring display, something I particularly like and, and uh, uh, that's a gigabyte only feature. So a little kudos for that because I really would like to see that more on other motherboards as well. Connectivity wise, we got a somewhat disappointing 2.5 gigabit LAN. I was expecting to have five at that price point coming from a pro. For, if it had it been an X870 hours Elite, I would have been happy with 2.5 gigabit. But this motherboard is going against Strexes from Asus, uh, MSI Carbons and stuff like that. It needs to have what it takes and what it would have taken uh, or took would have been a five gigabit per second LAN, I think. I passed that message. But on the other hand, we do have a premium six gigabit uh, per second fast, very low latency Wi-Fi 7 dual band adapter. So yeah, rather happy on that side of things. Finally, audio wise, well, we have a good but dated 7.1 channel ALC1220 from Realtek, which to be fair is cleansed by rather generous 500 microfarads worth of capacitors, but no more film-based uh, uh, WiMAC capacitors, which, made Gigabyte such an amazing board in terms of audio recording and playback because those film-based capacitors were the shit in terms of high quality playback. And well, overall it's an acceptable IO. That's what I want to say. We have, uh, you know, all the good features that the X870 e chipset brings, the USB 4, uh, the Wi-Fi 7, but it's so lazy. The LAN, 2.5 gigabit, fine. Okay, I can forgive this one. But the fact that we're removing a feature, an audio feature, which has been around for a decade, it just confirms that there's somebody in the Gigabyte engineering team or marketing team or finance team who decided to save a few bucks. Disappointing. Now, cooling wise, well, at least here we have some good news uh, with eight PWM fan connectors scattered on our board for an easy access and which will provide a strong air based cooling. But most importantly, we have all the elements needed to build the most intricate custom water cooling setup two water pump connectors, two thermal sensors, and one water flow sensor. So, yes, water cooling enthusiasts, you can rejoice. I'll finally end on uh, one of the X870 Arrows Pro strongest point, its troubleshooting solution. From a vague yet important easy debugger to a precise important error OLED screen, we have everything you will need to pinpoint the exact source of why your motherboard refuses to boot. In addition, we have soldered power and reset button and a very important CPU-less BIOS flash back button, the X870 Arrows Pro in its troubleshooting section retained uh, what made its predecessor so attractive. So at least we have that. Now in conclusion, 
the Gigabyte X870e Aorus Pro will cost you about 330 US dollars before taxes and in Europe about the same. Now, despite showing some strong engineering effort, I want to say, great specs and even some really premium features, the X870 Aro seems to suffer from a bad case of the let's save some money and let's try to hide it. Gigabyte have been cutting uh, uh, corners left and right on this motherboard by imposing outdated standard and pearls when compared to its natural competition like the MSI MAG X870 Heat Tomahawk, which for an identical pricing will give you a more robust product. And actually everything I've been saying here, repeating myself, Gigabyte already has realized and knows it because this is the only reason why they just released last week their X3D lineup of motherboard, which is basically the very same X870E Elite and X870E Pro, well, with eight layered PCB, an improved VRM, better RAM speed, and even swap the 2.5 gigabit LAN to the five gigabit one. And for the past decade of reviewing, um, Gigabyte motherboard never disappointed me, not once. Especially the Pro, which used to be my favorite motherboard to be reviewed. And no one is more surprised than myself to say to you about the X870e Aros Pro, do not waste your, earn, uh, your hard earned cash on it. Unless there is a half price promotion, obviously in that case, maybe, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very good motherboard. But yeah, other than that, pass your way because this is a half cooked, expensive, half assed motherboard, which I've done great in 2024 but not now and not today.